And national pleasure, pledges rather to cut greenhouse gas emissions still fall far short of what is needed to limit catastrophic global warming. This according to a new report published by the UN just weeks before countries are heading to Azerbaijan for the UN's annual climate summit. Based on the body's assessment, the plans already submitted by nations to the UN would only cut global emissions by 2.6% 2, 2 by 2030. Our environment editor, Valerie de Kemp, joins me now in the studio. Valerie, we have this alarming estimate by the United Nations, but how far are we from where we need to be? We're far a cry from where we actually need to be. And as you said, um, action as it stands would only lead to 2.6% reduction in emissions this decade um, compared to 2019 levels. And that's barely a dent compared to the 43% reduction needed in the next six years in order to avert the worst consequences of global warming. So essentially, we are at 2.6% uh, reduction by 2030 and we need to be at 43%. So you see uh, there's a huge gap there. Um, UN Climate Chief Simon Steele said that this was shocking, but not surprising given the levels of uh, the concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere in a separate report also released today by the UN's Climate and Weather uh, Agency, we know that uh, planet warming gases, including carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, actually have reached record highs in 2023. Now, the question some of you might be asking is, if you have nearly 200 countries that signed the Paris Agreement back in, back in 2015, have devised plans in order to limit global warming, why are we not seeing the results? And so there are several points to that. Obviously, the fact that some of the, the plans, the commitments are not as ambitious as they should be, but also countries are not taking enough action in order to meet those targets. Um, there's also a question of maybe, um, not maybe, we know that countries are not, um, at, not not being as aggressive as we know that we should be in cutting fossil fuels. Um, and in terms of climate plans more specifically, we know that fewer than half of the current plans contain measures explicitly on fossil fuels, and only 11 actually include measures to phase out and end the use of fossil fuels. And there's also very quickly a question on countries having very um, economy-wide targets, saying we're going to limit our emissions by X, Y, and Z, but they're not looking specifically, targeting more specifically um, sectors, very high-emitting sectors like transport, agriculture, and energy as well. So where does this leave countries ahead of the COP29 summit later in the month? So um, as part of their Paris Agreement obligations, countries are uh, expected to come up with more ambitious plans every five years. And so they're facing a new deadline now, February 2025, to deliver stronger nationally determined contributions, or NDCs as they're called. And so expect to, to hear a lot about those NDCs at COP29 in Azerbaijan, because pursuing persuading nations to come up with more ambitious plans could actually depend on the success of the talks. Climate observers, for example, say that some countries might use more ambitious plans as a bargaining chip to get something in return. So developing nations saying, yes, we are willing to be more ambitious, but we expect more money in return from wealthy nations. This, of course, in the context of high-tension negotiations um, over a, a, a package of more than $100 billion in funding for uh, developing nations that rich countries have not yet uh, properly funded. Um, we know that some countries are expected to release a new NDC even before or during uh, the negotiations. The UK uh, Prime Minister Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer, for example, promised during um, the UN's General Assembly last month that the UK would unveil uh, a new pledge during uh, the conference. And the UK being quite an interesting and telling example of what more ambitious could actually look like. So um, the government's advisory climate change committee has recommended that the UK uh, reduce its emissions by 81 percent by 20. 35 up from 68 percent, which is the current goal. So you see, you know, quite an improvement there. But again, meaningless if if not action um, is being taken.